Sir Michael, you've reiterated yesterday that also the new defence policy of the UK will put NATO at its core. How much does talk about NATO, talk about how much it still is a stable structure, damage that alliance itself? Well, well, the alliance needs to stick together now. The alliance is being tested. It's being tested by Russia. It's being tested by terrorism in the Middle East. There's never been a time when Europe and NATO really need to uh, stick together. And Britain is going to be part of that. We're leading the very high readiness task force, the response uh, unit of NATO all this year. We're deploying troops to Estonia. We're deploying RAF aircraft to Romania for southern air policing. We will continue to lead in NATO to help bring that reassurance that the alliance needs. There was a lot of talk here to strengthen alliances, to avoid a fallback to spheres of influence. Now you're about to leave a very strong alliance at the European Union. How much are you becoming a sphere of influence for the United States? Well, we're leaving uh, the political European Union, but we're not leaving the continent. Uh, Europe remains our continent, and we're going to go on contributing to the security of our continent. We also have this transatlantic relationship. Our oldest and strongest ally is with the, with the United States. It's a very strong defense relationship. So we see that benefiting uh, uh, both. Uh, we see that benefiting the United States, where we will be a bridge between Europe and the United States. But it also benefits uh, the alliance as a whole, that Britain is able to link with the United States in that way. Now, Britain has always been skeptical of EU ambitions uh, to build up its own force. You are hinging your defence even more on NATO, even more on your US partner in the future. How is that going to work? Well, defence is, is for NATO, not the European uh, Union. And we're not alone in uh, trying to uh, encourage the European Union to avoid duplicating what is being done in NATO. NATO has to be our primary defence. And at the last NATO summit, we agreed that the European Union and NATO need to work more closely together, need to avoid duplication. So we have, with other members of the European Union, we have been resisting uh, calls for a European headquarters or a European army. We don't need that. We have NATO. We need to make NATO work properly for everybody. The EU will no doubt though, go ahead without you on that though. Uh, will you still be a stakeholder in that process at all? Well, it's not just Britain that's been uh, pointing to the need not to set up new unnecessary structures. Many of the, uh, when we discussed this in Bratislava in September, many other European countries joined with us saying, look, we already have NATO. We don't need a U EU army. We don't need an EU uh, headquarters. They have different roles. Europe has the political role. It can impose sanctions, for example, on, on, on Putin. It has the diplomatic clout, but it is NATO that is the military power. And it's very important that we don't uh, uh, have two competing uh, organizations. So, Michael, thank you very much. Thanks.